Welcome back, my weebs and otakus. It's Otaku no Fuji, and today I'm going to play UFO Robot Grendizer, The Feast of the Wolves. This is a 1970s giant robot anime game based on the Grendizer uh, franchise, which admittedly I'm not actually familiar with this because I don't really watch 70s anime because I don't know it all. All the 70s robot shows all sort of look the same to me. And they also all kind of have a look like they're, they haven't found that kind of distinct anime visual style yet. So a lot of the 70s shows look like, like Hanna-Barbera shows to me. So I don't know. I've never really been into these 70s giant robot anime. It's actually really good. It has a Metacritic score in the 50s, but I think it's a case of the wrong people reviewed it and also... It's one of those games kind of like Earth Defense Force where even if it was amazing, people would be all like, oh, but this type of game can't get more than a six, you know, even if it was the greatest thing ever. Because, you know, most reviewers are idiots that are bad at their job. But the gist of it is that you actually play as an alien from a planet called Fleed who had to come to Earth because other aliens took over his planet. So he steals this giant robot, Grendizer, and he flees the planet, and he ends up on Earth. And then the aliens come to Earth to take us over, but he's already here, so he defends us. This is the gist of Grendizer. It's freaking cool! Every, every level is sort of like an episode of the anime. There's definitely a, you know, a beginning, a middle, and a climax. And there's multiple... Each of the missions basically is one level. So there's a couple that are just out in the wilderness, and there's one that's on an archipelago island. The whole capital is under attack. Besides our friend, and then this is this one takes place in Tokyo. Let's go. But I mean, look at it! It freaking gorgeous looking. This is definitely a budget, you know, low budget type of cheap release. But they put their effort in into smart places, I think. The terrestrial flying object just intercepted this order from the Vega units. Listen to this. Because it to me the, the the main flaws with the game I think are intentional. Because it has dumb dialogue and it has bad voice acting. But I think I mean go watch anime from that era. It has dumb dialogue and it has bad English voice acting. So I think that they did it, they made it campy and corny intentionally. And I kind of love that, to be honest. Uh, the game, it has like really low budget type menus and loading screens. And like, you can tell that, you know, it's pretty low budget. But then you get into the game itself and I think it looks awesome. But that's one of the main things that it got bad review scores for is because they're like, the dialogue is bad and the voice acting is bad, and, uh, but it's like, it's supposed to be, you morons. And like, when you fight, theme music plays and... Although one thing about this game that's pretty smart is they don't let you destroy stuff. Like, it, they won't let me just stomp through the city and cause problems. I think I can kick these things around a little bit, but I can't really do damage anywhere else. Which, you know, you're supposed to be heroes, so that kind of makes sense. But this is another thing, like these character art is kind of crappy, but to me it, it, it matches the aesthetic. So I think they intentionally made the artwork kind of crap looking on purpose. So that it's very, very true to the original source. I need to charge, I need to recharge my health. But the combat in this game is sort of interesting because you have punches and you have this sort of energy axe and you have these shoulder boomerang projectiles and you have that anti-gravity laser that stuns the enemies but over the enemies heads it'll have a little icon telling you what attacks you have to use to beat them. So these guys are just basic, I can just beat them up. But it'll tell me if I need to use the axe, or if I need to use punches, or if I need to use this thing. 
so once you get into the the rhythm of the combat it's really fun see now I have to use the axe on that guy now I have to punch and now he's vulnerable but I the combat's really fun and there are uh, boss fights like kind of challenging boss fights that you actually have to be smart and play well in order to kill the bosses. I it's good. This game is awesome. I do. I really like this game. My only complaint is that it it doesn't have manual save. It only has auto save. And uh, if you're a dummy like me who's like, oh, I probably shouldn't make a video with end game levels and stuff. I should load a previous save. Uh, to show people earlier in the game because I, I I care like that. Well, it overwrote my end game save, <laughs> so I would have I would get all the rest of the achievements, but I don't want to have to replay the whole game again. <laughs> and there's there's some things where you'll have to say escort a boat or protect a building or, but it, it's never annoying or difficult. They're always very smart to just to let you be a big robot and not really worry about stuff. And I appreciate that, especially after playing the Kong Skull Island game that was terrible. That, that didn't have a good sense of scale and didn't make you feel powerful. This game actually does make you feel big and powerful. I genuinely do think that it's a good game. It's not, it's not, it's not a good game for, you know, oh, only fans will like it. I mean, it certainly helps, but. I think it's a good robot game, period. That even if you're not a fan of the franchise, Grindizer, you can still play this and have a good time. It's $40 as the MSRP. I, I'm not sure that it's worth $40. I bought it for less than that and was pretty pleased with paying, you know, 18 bucks or whatever I paid. But 40 kind of seems like a like a big ask to me. As much as I do love it. I'm also a cheap ass. I'm not just a I'm not just an anime nerd. This game is so much better than the reviews would ever have you believe. I genuinely think it's good. And I I would highly recommend it. If you just like giant robots, if you like anime games, I would highly recommend this because there's nothing wrong with it. And I think most of the complaints are intentional in order to be true to the source material. They made it have corny dialogue and and funky voice acting on purpose. I genuinely believe that. And I think that's genius. UFO Robot Grendizer is... It's so perfectly true to its 70s giant robot anime roots. It nails the aesthetic. It nails the presentation. It, It's a perfect representation of that era of anime. I, I think they completely nailed it. I think it's awesome. Is it a good game if you're not already into it? Eh, probably not, but why would you be looking at a review of this if you weren't already into it, is my question. Check it out. It, it goes on sale fairly often. I wouldn't recommend it at full price, but you know, $20 or less. This was Otaku no Fuji. Thanks a lot for watching. Please like and subscribe and check out otakunofuji.com.